Hello, everybody. We're calling all world builders to Shapecraft uh, from November 18th, starting today to December 15th. There is $250,000 set up for grabs. We're going to talk all about that and more in this presentation. Shapecraft. Welcome. So there's 706 world builders with us today. Uh, we are super excited for all of you to be joining us in the Shapecraft Hackathon. So of those 706 world builders, 560 of you are coders and 146 of you identify as artists, right? So if you take a look at this breakdown here, one thing that you'll notice is as an artist, uh, your skills are in high demand for teams, right? So definitely take that into consideration for any coders, teams of coders that are looking for artists. Uh, you'll want to try to find somebody with those art skills. So definitely get on the team formation channels we'll talk about in a moment to start asking people, hey, do you have the skills to help us bring this vision to life, right? You'll take a look at the artists down here and you'll notice that is a pretty even spread amongst the artists that uh, can make game assets, storytellers, collectibles, and web designers. Uh, the most being collectibles, the least being the web designers there. So take note of that. And then on the coder side, uh, we have the most smart contract developers and the least game developers. So if you're looking for game developers to help bring your vision to life, let them know uh, they're out there. You just got to find them, bring them to your team. And uh, that's going to be a really intensive part of a lot of these projects. So try to pair up with a good game developer that you can find on these team formations. Uh, or if you are a game developer looking for a smart contract developer, know that they're out there, uh, that you can find them, uh, and that you can find people with the skills that you need to be able to bring your vision to life. Awesome. So let's talk about the prizes. So there's a $250,000 total prize pool brought to you by the Shape Team. And in that total prize pool, there are two main tracks. Uh, there's New Worlds. And for New Worlds, you'll notice there's $120,000 prize pool. That's split up amongst five finalists. So you can do the math. That's $24,000 for a finalist. And then the existing worlds is $90,000 for six finalists or $15,000 per finalist. Uh, all finalists also receive six months of free alchemy growth tier. And then... Uh, sort of overlapping with the main tracks. With the main tracks, you have to decide every project needs to be submitted to either new worlds or existing worlds. And we'll talk about what those mean in a moment. Uh, but then for the supplementary prizes, this can kind of overlap with the main tracks. Uh, because if we notice that your project is one that has good story weaving or that you've built good game assets, whether it's music or art or sprites or what have you, or collectibles, um, anything that's on the artistic storytelling lore side of things, then uh, you could receive one of these storytelling, story weaving supplementary prizes. Uh, so that's gonna be split up amongst 10 winners for $30,000. And then there's another supplementary prize, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a moment, uh, which is the best use of the eye and the key. So that sounds a little mysterious. We'll dive into what that means in a moment. That's a $10,000 prize pool, 10 winners. Again, it's a supplementary prize. So it could be in combination with any of the main tracks. It could also be applied to somebody who has not won the main tracks, but had that best use of the eye or key, or maybe it has a uh, good story weaving. All supplementary winners will also win two months of free alchemy growth tier. Great. So let's talk about existing worlds. Um, maybe first, actually, let me take a step back and talk about new worlds because I don't have a slide for it. New worlds is kind of self-explanatory, uh, especially as we go into the project submissions. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but it's any experience that you're really building upon shared data. So really like anything that you're building on top of NFTs, if you're building a game or some experience that you could have with those NFTs, maybe something that allows people to uh, use NFTs in a new novel way, that could be a new world where you're not actually making use of an existing project. But if you are making use of an existing world on the Shape ecosystem, these would be the three projects to take a look at. So the three projects would be uh, Deeple by DK, uh, that's this one over here, Movable Type by Death Beef, and Autumn by Golid. Uh, so Han explained uh, these projects earlier in uh, way better words than I can use, so definitely check them out and build on top of them if these are things that are really exciting to you. Uh, you can imagine building something really cool on top of Deeple that incorporates that avatar, removable type, taking those words and building something out of those words by having a bunch of letters and pulling them all together, or Autumn to really build like crafting items and weapons and all kinds of things that you could imagine building into a game from these chemical compounds, right? Like this really low level stuff, but building it up into something much, much bigger. So these would be the existing world. So if you're gonna go down this track, like I said, there's six finalists that you can find uh, that you could build these things on and incorporate into your world or experience. Great. So the eye and the key, this is what I was mentioning I would talk about a little bit more. For the eye, uh, so this is a NFT collection by Quibibi uh, called Awakened. Uh, this one is going to be something that you can purchase, that you can find on mainnet. 
uh, whereas the key over here is something that's going to be unlockable that you can earn uh, via winning a game on mainnet. Now for both of these on testnet, you don't need to necessarily, uh, you don't need to go purchase something or earn something in order to be able to use these on testnet. If you go to nomadmultiverse.com, you can actually just mint these or we could give you the NFT collection address. You'll find these in the resources to be able to actually just mint these by calling the mint function on the testnet. On mainnet, you will actually have to refer to these contracts specifically and any user who has these items will then be able to use them in your world. Now, how would you use these in the world? If you're building a game, for example, you might be able to take this eye and I'll show you the animation here because it's really cool. You might be able to take this eye and if somebody's a holder of this NFT inside of your game, you can imagine it being something like they have extra kind of vision, right? Maybe they're able to see new areas or new treasure chests, new items, new ghosts that other people can't see inside of your game. That might be one way to implement it, right? Uh, you could definitely be very creative here and that's going to be a key part of the criteria that we're going to see in the judging in just a moment. Then on the other side, you have the key. And the key is um, something that, again, like I said, you can earn. The key is going to be this item that you could potentially also bring into your worlds to maybe unlock a treasure chest or a room or new experience. Maybe you could even use it as a weapon. That would be pretty cool. It's really up to you how you want to implement these things. Uh, we do have a sprite for the key that you can use if you're using this in a 2D world. So uh, you'll see that in resources as well. And like I said, these are freely mintable on the testnet. And then on the mainnet, we'll have a collection that you can refer to. And we'll talk about these a little bit more as the uh, hackathon goes on. On Thursday, we're actually going to be doing a workshop specifically around the key. So uh, stay tuned for that and check that out when that becomes available. Awesome, so let's go into the logistics. So logistics, uh, the main source of communication is going to be through Shape Discord. We will continue to be reaching out to you via email, the email that you signed up on Alchemy University. Uh, but for anything that you need to communicate on, you're primarily going to go use the Shape Discord. You can find that in the resources on Alchemy University. If you go into Alchemy University now, there's a whole bunch of new information there in the Shapecraft Hackathon. You could go find the Shape Discord and get invited there. Uh, for Alchemy University, you can come and ask any questions about the products, any questions about the tools that you might be using to build these worlds. Uh, we're happy to help you with any technical support that you might need on that. Cool. For the schedule, the schedule looks a little like this. Uh, again, there's really four weeks, right? We, we're kicking off today and we end four weeks from today when the project submissions are due on 12-16. Uh, every Tuesday, there's going to be an async check-in. I recommend that you uh, do these. This keeps us up to date with your project. And so we know that you're like working on it, right? This is one of the ways that the judges can keep up and the teams can keep up with what you're working on. And we can know what kind of progress you're making so we can provide more resources to you, but also uh, being able to keep up with knowing that you're actually like working on the project and um, making sure that you're not just submitting some big project at the end of the hackathon and then we don't know when you actually worked on it, right? We don't want any unfair advantages, so make sure you're checking in with uh, the teams with your projects, making sure that you're putting up GitHub commits so that we can see the progress that you're making along the way uh, so that nobody has unfair advantage, pulls in like a project that they worked on previously or something like that. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll be having this team formation session, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But if you're still looking for a team, we're going to hold an event to help you try to find one and try to corral everybody into one event to try to help find people's teams. But we also recommend that you try to do all this stuff asynchronously, right? Shapecraft is primarily asynchronous. It's a global event, so people are going to be in all different time zones, right? Uh, when you're looking for team members, you should ask them, like, what time zone they're in. Uh, that, you know, may be a consideration if you're in completely opposite time zones, like, maybe a little bit harder to work together. Uh, but we want to make the event itself primarily asynchronous so that way uh, you don't need us to be there necessarily in uh, order to do some of these things like find teams or be able to get um, feedback on your projects from other teams or from you know team members of ours that happen to be online at that time. On Thursday, like I said, we'll do an item distribution workshop that's going to be about the key. Super excited about that. And then Friday, we're going to be doing project feedback sessions where you can take some time with us, at, us on the Alchemy University side, but also on the Shape side to get some feedback on your projects. Am I going in the right direction? What can I improve? Those sorts of things we want to bring up and do that live on Fridays. And we'll vary the time so hopefully people in different time zones can reach out to us on those. So keep an eye out for what times those are going on. Uh, we'll be telling you more through the email and through Discord. So the hackathon info, you could start building now. Uh, so you are open to begin. Um, start making your GitHub commits, start finding your team members. Don't fret if you're not ready to begin, you're still finding teams, most people are. You're still trying to figure out what to build. There's plenty of time to build it over the course of the four weeks. So uh, you know, make sure to pace yourself and we'll talk about that next slide as well. Uh, five members per team, that's the max. We'll have four weeks to build the project and find anything that you need to know on university.alchemy.com. On the sidebar, you'll find Shapecraft where you registered. You'll find a lot more info there now. 
Uh, so for the weeks of the hackathon, remember to pace yourself and have fun. There's four weeks. Really, the first week is about like getting your team members, getting your idea down, maybe even just start developing on it. Uh, week two, you really want to start getting it into a, a working state. Uh, that gives you time in week three to start bringing your project to mainnet. Now, yes, we're going to talk about this in a moment. You do have to have your project on shape mainnet. That is a requirement for this hackathon. We'll talk about what that means, and we'll talk about that a little bit further down in the slides. Finally, week four, polish and video submit. So video submission is going to be a big part of your submission as a team. It may be the only way that judges actually interact with your project because that's going to be the main way that they consume what you've created. So really think about what you want to convey in a five-minute video. Submit that at the end of uh, the hackathon, and make sure you give yourself plenty of time to build that project or the, to build that video because that's going to be the most important thing for the judges to see and to understand your project before they dive any further into the, your GitHub repository or any other things that you may have submitted as part of the project submission. So. Uh, how to find a team, join the Shape Discord. That's going to be the main thing. Let people know what your skills are. Again, if your skills are in high demand, you saw the stats before, then you know that people are looking for people that have your skill set. So let them know. Uh, if you have any ideas that interest you, that's also another way is like get other people who have similar ideas to you. Uh, there's an ideation channel that you can find in the Shape Discord to talk about the ideas that you have, post them up there and see if anyone else is interested in working with you on that. Uh, look at the existing projects posted in Shape Discord, see if they need your skills. And finally, join the team formation session tomorrow, Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Um, you know, this is the last resort sort of thing. Uh, I, you know, plenty of people are still going to be looking for a team, so we want to try to corral that energy. But try to find somebody, you know, if you can, asynchronously. You know, take a look in the Shape Discord, ask other people what they're building, and, uh, you know, get excited and have some fun. Cool. Judging. So for judging, I mentioned this idea that there is a mainnet requirement. So your project must read or write to shape mainnet. Now on the read side, you kind of have an advantage here, right? Because you don't have to necessarily send transactions on chain. You don't necessarily have to write smart contracts. Uh, reading is, is much, much easier on that side. So if you're building a game that builds on top of other NFT collections, like the, um, the key or the eye or any of the existing projects that are out there, you could potentially build a game that's just reading from these things like a, on, like a database, right? And knowing who owns those and being able to bring them into your world and do something like that. Uh, so that's quite possible that you're purely just reading from mainnet, in which case you don't have to worry about gas costs or anything like that. Um, if you are writing to shape mainnet, um, that may be something that you need to save time for, you need to think about, uh, you wanna do that after your project is really uh, fully fleshed out. Uh, so definitely think about that, uh, what you wanna do there. So uh, in the meantime, right, you could use the testnet fully and, and get familiar with that all the way up until when your project is ready to go to mainnet. Uh, so start from scratch. Your projects must start from scratch, except for any open source starter kits or libraries or any workshop materials that we've created. We have a whole bunch of workshops that you can find on Alchemy University slash resources. When you go into the hackathon, when you go into that tab, you can find these eight workshops that we gave or a bunch of other workshops at shapecraft.xyz. And uh, that's going to be stuff that you can use as well. Just let us know what you used. That's the only thing we really ask. It needs to be publicly available. So it can't be like a reusing of one of your personal projects from way back when. Uh, you can't do that. That's taking old work and bringing it in. It's a bit of an unfair advantage to anyone else who's starting from scratch in a hackathon. So no reusing a personal project. You must start from scratch like everyone else. Level playing field across the board. Put all your submission and everything on GitHub so that way we can see your commit history. Async check in with us on Tuesdays. That way we know like what you're up to and we can uh, keep tabs with you, help you out, but also know that you're, you're working through this stuff just like everyone else in the hackathon. And finally, you can use existing game assets, so that's totally fine. So any sprites, tile seats, any game assets that you find online that are publicly available, again, just let us know what you used and let us know what you built. Uh, that helps us do better judging uh, on our side. So lastly, ask us if you have any questions. If I didn't answer everything here, uh, ask us if you have any questions. We're freely available to answer any of this stuff. Project submission, uh, submit your project on Alchemy University before December 16th at 12 p.m. UTC. Again, give yourself plenty of time. Maybe submit on December 15th, right? There's no penalty to submitting early. Uh, just get it out there. You know, you're gonna need to put in a title, a description, your team members GitHub link, live demo where you can, and a five minute video. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time to be able to create that video and really think about creatively how you can share your vision with the judges, right? You wanna capture attention here. You wanna build something that's really going to excite you know, the judges and, and help them recognize the vision that you had and how you were able to execute on that. So uh, be sure to spend good time on your video. This is the judges potentially only impression of your project. Um, if it's not like a video that really, you know, is, shows much 
uh, interesting uh, execution, much interesting development on your side, then it's not something a judge is likely to spend too much more time on, maybe looking at the GitHub, maybe looking at the demo, but the video is really where you capture the judge's attention. So make sure that you spend uh, plenty of time on that. We won't accept late submissions. We can't bend the rules for anyone. So please get your projects in on time. Give yourself plenty of time to build that. Uh, for judging, these are going to be the primary criteria that we look at uh, for all the judges. So there's five judges. Uh, you can find the judges on Alchemy University. You go to the judges tab. There's uh, execution, creativity, composability, and aesthetics. Execution is really how well did you execute on the vision that you have? Does your project work? Uh, there's bonus for integrating things like Web3 stack, like smart accounts, uh, account kit from Alchemy. Uh, so we have a video on that, so check that out. That's like the seventh video in the eight videos that we did going into this uh, hackathon. So definitely check that out on the resources tab. For creativity, um, just having like an original use case, new ideas, concepts, or better solutions for existing problems. Uh, this is what you're going to want to do there. Uh, we're going to give you bonus points there if you integrate things like the, uh, the key and the eye, any existing projects, things like that. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the key and the eye also give you access to that supplementary prize that you could also win for the best use of the key and the eye. So make sure to use them if you can integrate them into your vision and your world. Composability, this is going to be a huge aspect of the hackathon, is can you build this web of NFTs? Can you build worlds on top of shared data? So if you're building a new world, you should display high potential to be able to be composed upon, to be used by other people. Uh, if you're building an existing world, showing that you have a deep integration of things like the Deeple, movable type, or autumns, uh, or you could use all three of these, right? Whatever combination you want to do. Uh, but that shows us that you're building on top of these other worlds, right? That we're using the data layer on the blockchain, and then we're able to expand on that, right? So that we can create this like ever-growing source of content. Uh, and then finally, for the aesthetics, uh, that it delivers like high UI UX usability and design good game assets, whether it's music or uh, backgrounds or tile sets, sprite sheets, what have you, uh, we'll be looking at that as well. Cool, just two more things. Uh, so last two things, resources. Again, like I said, go to shapecraft.xyz, university.alchemy.com, go to the hackathon tab, check out Shapecraft and go to the resources tab. Uh, you could also use the Alchemy University courses for all your Web3 educational needs. So definitely check out all that stuff out on the resources tab on Alchemy University. And finally, the Code of Conduct. Uh, code of Conduct was agreed upon on registration. It's also available on Alchemy University. We want to make sure that this is going to be a fun and safe place for everybody. If you need any assistance with uh, this sort of thing, then reach out to uh, Alchemy team member or Shape team member in either Discord. We're happy to assist you. Again, we want to make this a fun and safe space for everybody, so make sure you adhere to that Code of Conduct and uh, just be nice to everybody. All right. Great, so that is it. That's Shapecraft. All right. Excited to see you all in there, and thank you so much for being a part of this.